The Lord be with you. Well, good morning and welcome. And it's a great pleasure and a joy to be with you today. Today, of course, is Palm Sunday. And ordinarily, we'd be handing out these palm crosses in church. Now, these, of course, as you know, are symbolic of the palm branches that were strewn before Jesus' donkey as he rode into Jerusalem. And typically, they would be kept for a year and burnt and the ashes used next Ash Wednesday for the mark of the cross on your forehead. But, um, a lot of symbolism here, but these are the palm crosses which we'd ordinarily be giving out today. And you may still have one in your home from last year. Our first reading will be from Psalm 118. We have a reading from Mark's Gospel, chapter 11, the Liturgy of the Palms. Our film clip today in the series where we've been looking at how different Christians live out their lives in the community, we'll be looking at the role of uh, a college chaplain. And interestingly, we will be joined later on today by Reverend Mia Smith, who is herself a, a chaplain at Hartford College, Oxford University, and she has her roots in Hawthorne. And uh, we're delighted to invite her to share in our service today. So I'll be introducing Mia to you later on. My name is Anna Bevan and I'm a dental student at King's College London. Studying at dental school is both interesting and challenging, but generally it's a very rewarding experience because you're alleviating people's pain on a regular basis. The chaplaincy of guys is right in the middle of campus, so you can't, you can't really miss it. Um, so, for example, um, the, the chaplaincy itself is within one of the main university buildings and therefore it's very easy to access. You can go to the international lunches on Mondays, which are free lunches where you can just meet loads of people, whether you're religious or not. The chaplain at Guy's is Reverend Jim. He's, um, he's really interested in kind of bringing arts into the university chapel atmosphere and kind of making it a, a nice light atmosphere that everyone can come to and relate to and add a bit of humour and spark to the, to the chaplaincy, which is really refreshing. At university, there can be a lot of pressure to make a lot of friends, and you might be unlucky with your, your halls or um, your course mates, but the chaplaincy is a great way to bridge the gap of being able to meet people from different courses and meet people that you wouldn't necessarily meet otherwise. Chapel, for me, is a place of quiet and reflection that I can go to any time of the day that I want. And when I'm sitting in the pews, I often look at the stained glass windows. There's a, a dove in the central stained glass window pane representing God the Father. It just feels like it feels like you're you're being looked after, and it's kind of like a symbol of hope. No matter what your faith, it's 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 just a a, a nice image to look at and think about. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the light of Jesus, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Most merciful God, we confess to you, before the whole company of heaven and one another, that we have sinned in thought, word and deed in what we have failed to do. Forgive us our sins, heal us by your Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness, and keep us in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Colic for today. A special prayer for today, Palm Sunday. Almighty and everlasting God, who in your tender love towards the human race sent your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, grant that we may follow the example of his patience and humility and also be made partakers of his resurrection through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
Our first reading will be from Psalm 118. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give you thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvellous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his love endures forever. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this. The Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door, outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing, untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming, kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I'm now delighted to welcome Reverend Mir Smith, who will give a reflection on today's readings. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This week we have marked a year since the first lockdown began. One of the lovely side effects has been worshipping with you all for the first time since I was a child, albeit remotely. Thanks to Reverend Paul for giving me your pulpit today and thank you church for your love, your faithful witness and your example which formed me in the faith. We should not begin to underestimate the importance of our ancient and beautiful buildings. People continue to come to churches to find peace or to connect with their fellow men and women whose steps led them to the same place for the same reasons. We are all shaped by the places we inhabit. This past year, we have been given cause to reflect on the spaces and places where we live and do life, either because we can no longer be present in them or because we are now in them with an unexpected intensity. Today, our readings focus in on people, a crowd in a specific place at a specific time and on a person, Jesus, who transcends time and space. We're going to look briefly at these two in turn. The place is Jerusalem, the site according to our Old Testament lesson of messianic prophecy. And we find ourselves in the middle of a crowd about to witness an extraordinary moment in history of prophecy fulfilled. One of the biggest casualties of the pandemic has been the crowd. I can hardly remember what it feels like to be in a crowd, to be swept along out of a football stadium, to be on a crowded bus or train, to be queuing for a drink in a full pub. 
the noise of many voices, shared journeys, celebrations and commiserations, depending on which football match you've just been to. Our gospel reading propels us into the noise, the excitement and the risk of a crowd. It's a heady, exciting scene. A people longing for deliverance suddenly see hope on the horizon and they provide a welcome fit for a king and a conqueror making a carpet of palms and shouting and singing, Hosanna, save us now. But where there's a crowd, there's trouble. The Roman and the religious authorities had seen it all before, of course, every single Passover, some religious celebrity or another gathering a bit of a crowd. I would imagine that the security forces felt that this would-be Messiah was something of a joke on his donkey. Hard to imagine he could pose any threat to the empire. Let's look closer at him. What strikes me from the gospel accounts is that Jesus was completely in control. Jesus tells his disciples exactly where and when to find the donkey, which he'll then use to ride into the city. Jesus had not come to overthrow Roman military might. He had come to do something much more subversive. He had come to overthrow and conquer their hearts. And he would do this not with a show of force, but by initiating his reign of love from the timber throne of his cross. The heady events of the triumphal entry into Jerusalem set for us a scene to the drama we know well. We can feel the momentum building as the events of Holy Week begin to unfold. We know his destination is the cross and we know that ultimately death can't hold him. Somehow those crowds in Jerusalem recognise the significance of the moment as Jesus rode into the city. The God of creation arriving on a lowly creature to be killed by human creatures. The dignity of the divine on a donkey riding into Jerusalem, knowing that in spite of their delight, death lies ahead. Jesus knew that the turmoil of the week ahead was one he would have to face alone, isolated from those he loved most dearly, even to the final separation of death. This is especially poignant during the pandemic, when we've been separated from loved ones and barred even from hospital visits. This was the way God was emptied into human form, poured out for us, broken for us, aligned with our broken world so completely that we can never again say that we are misunderstood, bereft or forgotten. We are not. For this path we walk is a path already walked for us by God, trodden down and made straight in his footsteps. Much as we long to return to our church buildings to worship, instead we settle down in the kitchen with a cuppa to join one another and the whole company of heaven in singing our hosannas. Wherever we are in time and space, we are assured that Jesus Christ lived among us and has carried the burdens of a suffering world. The God of history is the God of comfort and it is in recognising our own small place in his story that we are given perspective and hope. It is my prayer today that wherever you are and whatever you are going through, you will know that your King has come to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Make way, make way for Christ the King. King splendor arise. Fling wide the gates and welcome thee into
confirm our faith in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Though he was divine, he did not cling to equality with God, but made himself nothing. Taking the form of a slave, he was born in human likeness. He humbled himself and was obedient to death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God has raised him on high and given him the name above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and every voice proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. As we intercede for others, let us pray. Loving God, your son Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey as a different kind of king. You call your followers to be different too. So we pray for the church that Christians may bear the fruit of your spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Take firm root in our lives that we may lovingly serve and welcome all with no exceptions and no small print. May we live together in your love and shine as lights in darkness to reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At the Last Supper, Jesus washed his disciples' feet as an example of service. We pray for all those who serve at this time of coronavirus crisis, all those in the NHS, social care, the other essential services, all who volunteer or are good neighbours there for one another. We thank you for their compassionate love and ask that you will continue to bless their work and to equip them with the energy and determination they need to go on rising to the needs of the hour. We pray that you will help everyone to seek the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus experienced distress and anguish over what lay ahead. We pray for all who are experiencing distress and anguish at the present time, all those with the virus at home or in the hospital, those fearful for others, those whose jobs have vanished, those whose futures are in doubt. We thank you for all the efforts made on their behalf and pray that we may all receive your peace and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for the sick and the suffering. Give hope and faith to the dying and bereaved and gentleness to those who minister to them. In Jesus, you love the whole world, so we continue to pray for those areas where normal daily life is violence, war and grinding poverty. We pray that as we approach Easter, peace may begin to take root even in these dark places. And as the COVID pandemic continues to challenge our daily life, we also pray for those affected. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. In this time of uncertainty and distress, sustain and support the anxious and fearful, and lift up all who are brought low, that we may rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Simon and Joseph, Mary and John became part of your church in Jerusalem. Bring into your church today a varied company of people to walk with Christ in the way of his passion and to find their salvation in the victory of his cross. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ.
Faithful God, may we who share in this time of worship glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Fill us, good Lord, with your spirit of love, and as you have fed us with your presence, so make us one in heart and mind. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, that concludes our short service of worship today, and I hope it's been of some comfort to you. We are opening our church next week. At least that is the plan. Uh, we've aimed to open it on Easter Sunday, a symbol of hope. Uh, we have been uh, scouring the church to within an inch of its life. We'll be wearing masks and sanitising and keeping our distance and all the usual courses of action that keep each other safe. But above all, we will be open and we're looking forward to having you with us. Uh, if you're in the area of Hawthorne, then of course, call in to your normal Sunday service, 9.15 as usual. And if you're wanting to visit us, then please drop us an email just to be sure that we have room for you because we are a tiny church. I'd like to thank those of you who have contributed whilst the church has been closed. We haven't been able to take collections, of course, and so we've been relying very much upon the generosity of people like you who make donations through online giving, through our bank transfer or through our credit card. If you would uh, like to help us, um, then you can just go to our uh, website and you can make a transaction by debit or credit card and it's all very safe. And uh, if you'd like to gift aid it, then please let us know and we'll make arrangements for that too. So we really are in a time of hope, aren't we? Both in the world and in the church. As more and more people are being vaccinated, and it's becoming more and more safe uh, to go outside and mix with other people uh, that we're hoping will be the future, then of course hope is ahead. Spring is in the garden, the church is opening at Easter, the ultimate symbol of hope that we as Christians have, and life will continue. So may God bless us, that in us may be found love and humility, obedience and thanksgiving, discipline, gentleness and peace. Amen. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ.